All right, this is Paul Mitchell, professor of agriculture and applied economics at the University of Wisconsin in Madison and UW Extension. I'm here today to talk about crop insurance um, and late and prevented planting. What you see behind me is a typical scene this year in Wisconsin. It's wet. It just rained this morning and this afternoon. Um, fields are wet. People haven't been able to work. And that's a common scene across Wisconsin and much of the upper Midwest this year. Most of our Wisconsin acres are insured for both corn and soybeans, around 75 to 80 percent of the acres each year. And part of that coverage includes late and prevented planting. Late planting is um, triggered when you plant after specific dates for specific crops in different parts of the state. For Wisconsin, for corn, for silage, um, and corn for grain, and then we have soybeans we'll talk about today. Corn for grain um, will be triggered um, in northern Wisconsin on May 25th. Um, corn for silage up in northern Wisconsin is, is on May 31st. Here in most of the state of Wisconsin, the, the trigger dates for late planting are May 31st and June 5th for corn for silage. For soybeans, it's June 15th for the southern third of Wisconsin, and the rest of the northern Wisconsin, northern two-thirds, is June, is June 10th. If you're planting those crops after those dates, you are in the late planting phase, and you have a, various options for those acres that you're looking at planting. First is to take it as late planting. Still plant it, but it's late. And what you do is you have to talk to your crop insurance agent, tell him or her about it, and then what happens for those acres, the coverage is reduced by one percentage point for each day you are late. Um, and so that's one percent times your coverage, and your coverage is um, the price times your yield history, yield, your average yield, and then um, the coverage level you chose when you bought the insurance back in March. So that's your guarantee. You take one percent reduction in that each day that you plant late, on the, only on those acres. The other option is to take a full preventive plant indemnity. And what that is, it's 55% of that, that um, guarantee that I just talked about. So that would be a full indemnity for a preventive plant. You can't do anything with that acres anymore um, until after November 1st. Um, you can plant a cover crop, you can still mow the weeds and everything, but you're not allowed to harvest or graze anything until after November 1st. That's preventive plant, you're not allowed to take any productive, productive um, crop off of that. If you take the full preventive plant indemnity here in Wisconsin, you can still establish a alfalfa crop for next year's um, production. So that's a viable option for some farmers is to, to go with this summer, plant in um, some alfalfa and have it ready to go next year for um, alfalfa production. Another option is what they call a partial preventive plant indemnity. What you do there is you only take 35% of the preventive plant indemnity. And so instead of taking 55% of your coverage, you take 35% to 55% of your um, guarantee, so about 19 and a quarter percent. Much lower payment, but now you have the option to do things with this property, uh, these acres. You can um, plant it, so for in this Wisconsin, a good example is to plant forage. You can grow something and make a forage crop off of it, harvest it. You don't have to worry about the November 1st date anymore. So that's a big option that a lot of farmers might find valuable. It depends upon how much you need forage, how much productivity you think you can get, and how that compares to um, the loss of the two-thirds of the preventive plant indemnity. The fourth option is to just leave it uninsured. Still plant whatever you want, maybe corn, maybe some other crop, do whatever you want with it, it's just no longer insured, and so you, know, you don't have to worry about the crop insurance rules. Um, there are a few other considerations that you want to make sure you talk to your crop insurance agent about. He will work with you to know all the specifics for your farm and how the dates that are important for you, um, your yield histories, your coverage levels, and you can help pencil out which of these options are the best for you to choose. Um, you also have to tell him or her about the different dates um, if you plant late particularly. Um, another issue to be concerned about um, if you are in the period of preventive plant or late planting particularly is enterprise units. To qualify for enterprise units, you have to have um, acres planted in two sections. Um, in order to qualify. And enterprise units are important for really reducing your um, premium. In this, in Dane County here, it, it can cut your premium in half if you qualify for enterprise units. All your grain is, is one big unit, but you pay a lot lower in, um, premiums. If you plant less than 20% or less than 20 acres in two um, sections, you no longer can qualify for enterprise units. That can make a big surprise when your premiums come due later this summer. So you want to make sure you um, make sure you get your corn planted or your soybeans planted in, to qualify for enterprise units if you are um, receiving the enterprise unit discount. Um, the last thing that's um, in the news lately is uh, um, how it impacts your um, payments, and that's unclear exactly. Our traditional ARC payments um, are would not be affected by them, but um, the potential the, mar the market facilitation program payments 
it's unclear exactly how those will deal with prevented plant. It seems at this time they will only pay for acres that are actually planted. So potentially you would lose the option to get um, MFP payments for um, acres that you declare as prevented plant. So you have to be concerned about how it affects your yield histories. Um, if you take it a full prevented plant, it's as if you, it, it's just left out. It doesn't affect it at all. Whereas if you do partial prevented plant, sometimes that, what it actually does is it, it counts as 60% of, um, of your average. So it does affect your yield history. A key issue to remember in all of this is to always communicate with your crop insurance agent. He or she can sit down with you and know the specifics of your farm. They will know your yield histories. They will tell you specific how it affects your yield histories in the future. They can tell you about the options, the specific dates that apply to your farm, um, the specific prices, your coverage levels. And then you can sit down with him or her and work out the, and do the penciling out of which of these four options is the best way to go forward for you. So hopefully today you've gotten some information on how to use crop insurance in your choices if you're facing late prevented planting issues this year. Um, the links are below to show you for more information, the detailed maps for the specific counties and the specific dates for corn for grain, corn for silage, and soybeans here in Wisconsin. This is Paul Mitchell, Ag Economist, outstanding in the field.